What's going on guys? Welcome back to 4K Motoring. I'm Chris and today we're going to do a gear review for you. Today I want to talk about my AGV Sport Modular Carbon Fiber Modular Helmet. I want to share my experiences with it now having it for probably about 20,000 miles, a little over three years now, everything I've had that I liked about it, things I didn't like about it, and let you know if it's the helmet for you. So it turns out in 2022, I finally picked up the Rona. So I'm gonna be home from work for a couple days, so I figured what better way to spend it than making videos for you guys. I've noticed some of my other product review videos have gotten a lot of kind of unique hits. So I figured I'd try a couple of these and you guys let me know what you think about them. Let me know if you've owned any of these products or looked at them in the past and what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear about it. So I'm gonna start with this product that I've had now, like I said, for two or three years, put about 20,000 miles total on, and overall had kind of mixed experiences with it. So what this is, if you're not familiar, this is the AGV Sport Modular helmet. As you can see from the design, this is a full carbon fiber helmet, which makes it, as a modular helmet, extremely light. This is in fact the lightest modular helmet that you can buy. And the form factor is also pretty thin. It's got stainless steel hardware built into it. So overall the construction is very good where it counts. They say it's as safe as Rossi's GP helmet was. We can debate that as much as you want, but that's basically what this is. It's a modular, meaning the front end comes up and it turns into more or less a three quarter face helmet and it comes down and likewise, the visor can also open up as well. You've got a small front chin vent. You've got the top vent. Opens and closes. And then you've got a rear spoiler vent. So what do I think about this helmet? That's really the purpose of this video, right? So like I said, had it for a while and I came from a Shoei Neotech, the first generation. Had that helmet for about five years, as per industry standard, decided to get a new one around that time. It was showing some signs of wear, and I used it pretty frequently, so it was definitely time to upgrade. I looked at the Neotech 2, but that Cena SRL system, that built-in comm system they had, kind of turned me off from it. The Cena, while it was great when it first came out, they have fallen so far behind in the industry, and Cardo really seems to be taking the lead. I didn't want to get another Cena, especially a different version of the one I already had, which is basically the 20S. It just seemed like total garbage to me, and I couldn't imagine why such a high-name manufacturer would go with something like that. I'm sure there's industry deals and stuff like that. But I ended up going with one that doesn't have any native comm systems, so I can use whatever I wanted, being the more superior systems, e.g. the Cardo Pactock Bold at the time I bought this helmet. Now, overall, as a helmet goes, this really isn't too bad. Like I said, it's super light. It does the job of a modular helmet. So it does pretty easily open up with a latch under the chin bar. It's got pretty decent weather stripping on the top. Not quite the double layer that the showy system has, but it's round and it tends to squish like an O-ring. It is pinlock equipped with a pinlock 120, which they claim to be one of the widest field of view pinlock lenses available. And the field of view is pretty good for a modular helmet. I can't complain about that. The, as I mentioned, the stainless steel hardware, both for the locking tabs, the inner rings, if we can see those inside there, and our actual hinge mechanism, all stainless steel, so they're all pretty strong. The liner inside is pretty comfortable. Pretty well done. The upper crown liner is reversible, they say, with a sweat wicking material on one side and a more insulating material on the other. Personally, I found it doesn't really change a whole lot depending on which side you're on. So I just leave the sweat wicking side all the time on and I'm usually pretty comfortable with that. So in the spirit of this video, what are the big takeaways? 
So on a list of things that I really like about this helmet, first and foremost is absolutely the weight. This thing is super light and for a modular helmet that makes long distances amazing. It makes it, you know, compared to a normal pretty heavy modular helmet, makes it a whole lot lighter on your neck, a whole lot less fatiguing and nicer to wear while you ride. The ventilation is pretty good through this helmet as well. The airflow going into it, even though the little air vent on the top of this is kind of small, it does suck in a pretty big amount of air, which is nice to cool you off. I will say on that front, it is very loud air. And that is one of the negatives of this helmet is that it is loud. This carbon fiber shell is super stiff and any noise on the outside of it just resonates through the entire helmet. And this thing is loud. I didn't notice it so much on a motorcycle without a windshield, but coming over the windshield of a touring bike, something like this that ends up putting wind kind of right at the bridge of your nose to the top of your head, somewhere in that range, that blast of wind becomes very loud on this helmet. I mentioned how easily it accepts third-party communications, which I have the Packtalk Bold on. Now they have the Edge. Still, I think they have the kind of top of the market comm systems. Really on that front, that's a whole different discussion and it depends on what your friends really have on which one's better for you. But overall, at least in the Raleigh area, these seem to be the superior comm system to use and I've been overall very happy with that compared to the old Cena's I used to have. That is unfortunately where my list of likes kind of end with this helmet. It meets standard with a great number of things. It is acceptable in a great number of things, but it's not really outstanding and that kind of concerns me. One of the biggest, probably overall worst issues I have with this helmet are the detents for both the face shield and the chin bar are super weak. And I mean super weak. With it in the up position, a slight breeze or a slight tilt to your head, it, the whole thing slams down in front of you. When you have just the visor up and you hit, I don't know, 50 miles an hour or so, the wind will just force slam it in your face. And that's not always super comforting, especially when you're behind a big windshield and don't really need that face shield to cut in like it does. The Showies for sure had stronger detents and that is something I absolutely miss about the Neotech I had. Likewise, some of the fit and finish on the helmet really doesn't seem worthy of the price that this helmet sits in. Now, this particular one I ordered from Spain on sale and got a pretty good deal on it, be it it's an ECE only helmet, it's not a dual rated DOT and ECE helmet, which could cause you issues if you're concerned about it. ECE is definitely a higher standard, more modern standard at least. There's a video I'll link up here about that. For what it is, this is a pretty expensive helmet. The plastics they use for some of the vents feel kind of cheap and just picking the helmet up, these liners, have a lot of movement to them and kind of poor fit that I would expect from such an expensive helmet. Hopefully there's a second generation of this helmet that would help a little bit, but for that, it really doesn't feel worthy of the price. A lot of people do complain about the chin strap being a little too far back. It does sit a little farther back towards the neck than a lot of the showies and other brands I've worn before. It's not ever been uncomfortable for me, so I'm not too concerned about that. Otherwise, I guess I have no real gripes with the helmet. It's, it, like I said, it meets standard, it does what it's supposed to do, and it's super light. So if those are kind of your main concerns, which they were mine at the time, the fact that it does those things, it accepts any communication system you want to put on it. And I did like the color pattern, the carbon fiber exposed with the white paint on the sides and more carbon fiber exposed on the back. Overall, I do tend to keep my helmets for about five years. And like I said, this one has about three years on it, so I'll probably keep it for the remainder of the five-year period I anticipated, unless there's a new Neotech or something new in the market that comes out to replace it. Like I said, a lot of it I'm just not thrilled about for the price. I don't think it's a bad helmet by any means. I wanna make sure I'm making that clear, but I don't think it's worthy of full price. If you find one at a discount, I would say absolutely buy it. Again, there is nothing nearly as light as this on the market for a modular helmet, and that makes your riding amazing. Overall, the sizing was pretty reasonable. It fit about the same in a medium size as the Showy did in medium size, so if you're shopping between, just know that. One thing I'll say about the Showy is that the Showy has different thickness top and side pads available, whereas this really just has the one for each size. 
So the Shoei allows you to be a little bit more custom. For the Shoei Neotech I had, I ended up getting the thicker crown of the helmet to kind of support the weight of that modular helmet a little bit better on my head, whereas this doesn't give me that option. So overall, it's not a bad helmet. It does fit pretty true to a medium head size, as you'd expect from a helmet. If you guys are interested in the AGV Sport Modular, I'm gonna leave a link down below just so you can check out the helmet and see what it offers. Overall, I think it's pretty cool. Like I said, not a perfect helmet, not quite worthy of full price, but if you can find one at a deal, I would say it's definitely something to consider. Have been happy with it, probably gonna keep it another couple years, then switch to whatever's next. If you guys have any experience with this helmet or any other modular helmets that you wanna tell me about, feel free to leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear about it and love to hear your experiences with it, see if they kind of match my own. If you guys have had a go-to helmet for X number of years, let me know that as well. I'd love to hear about it and love to hear what you guys are riding with as well and what your experiences with your helmets are. Especially if you have any problems or concerns with your helmets that you'd like to see addressed, just so I can kind of keep that in mind next time I shop for another helmet. If you guys like these kind of gear reviews, let me know in the comments below as well. Hit that like button if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing a couple more of these over the coming days. Again, let me know what you think about them. Let me know what concerns you have. As always, I'm Chris, this is 4K Motoring, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.